remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. America's evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And I wanted to talk about something uh, kind of interesting today, something I hear a lot about from uh, people I talk to every day, whether I talk to them in face-to-face -face conversations, uh, you know, out and about, or whether I talk to them on Facebook or through email or whatever. Uh, there, there's a certain uh, mentality and a certain question I'm getting a lot and a certain uh, attitude I'm, I'm hearing from people quite a bit out there. People in their 30s and their late 20s, people who are kind of new to the uh, electoral process, new to politics, just kind of finding their sea legs in terms of their political beliefs, and they're wondering where to go. And I hear from a lot of these people, and they're discouraged by Barack Obama. They're discouraged by the direction our nation is going in, in terms of our spending, which is out of control, in terms of government interference and government involvement in our daily lives. and in terms of the overall victim mentality that's being pushed by the government and, and rewarded by the government. They're, they're worried about all those things, but at the same time, a lot of those same people in their late 20s or 30s, early 40s, a lot of those people are still hesitant to, to embrace conservatism because of what they perceive as our stances on some social issues. They're just not quite ready to pull that trigger and come over to our side and vote Republican, vote conservative, and stand with us because of what they've been told about where we stand on certain social issues, things like uh, gay marriage or birth control or some other things. Those misconceptions and those things are what I wanted to address today. So if you're one of those people who's in your 20s or your 30s and you don't like what's going on in the Democratic Party, but you just can't see yourself coming with us either, this show is for you. This is one you're going to want to listen to. So away we go. What a lot of you people in that group uh, of, of, I don't want to say independent voters, that, that's too big of a, of, of a title there, but younger voters who just aren't sure which way to, to cast your political fortunes. What a lot of you may not realize is, is this. First of all, many of these social issues that the left and the media talks about in terms of conservatives and Republicans and Tea Partiers and so forth, many of those social issues are not nearly as high of a priority to us as the media and the left would lead you to believe. And secondly, I would also tell you the stances that the media and the left have ascribed to us that they've told you about over and over and over. Those stances have not been entirely accurate either. And I'm going to give you some examples today. First of all, first of all, let's talk about birth control a little bit. You remember the whole Sandra Fluke thing last year and, and, and the, the, the people out there in the media and, and the talking heads talking about how Republicans wanted to ban birth control? And that's not an overstatement, by the way. I mean, those, those missives and those headlines were out there. Look. Here's a couple of them you might have heard. These were actually out there. The Republican war on contraception. The GOP contraception ban jeopardizing women's health. So, you know, a lot of people out there would have you believe that during that whole controversy with Sandra Fluke and insurance companies and Catholic churches and so forth, that Republicans were trying to ban birth control. We were trying to take it off of your shelves at Walmart. Nothing could have been further from the truth. The facts of the matter are that in the birth control controversy of last year, our issue on the right was simply with the government forcing employers and religious institutions to pay for things that they had a moral opposition to. That was it. That was all. That's all there was to it. Kind of mundane and boring, really, until you get all of the hullabaloo from the left about it. We never advocated banning birth control in any way. Didn't happen. We never advocated banning companies from covering in their health care plans if they wanted to do so. We never advocated banning people from purchasing it on their own. We never advocated banning it from being sold in stores or, or anything like that. We simply had a problem with one group of people being forced over and above their moral objections to pay for the birth control of another group of people. That was all. I mean, heck, even if you disagree with us on that, that sounds like something that reasonable people can disagree on, but not to the left. And, you know, I talked about this uh, very topic at the time it happened last year on this show, and I made a particular challenge back then that nobody has taken me up on. 
with all of this talk about Republicans trying to ban birth control and go back to the Stone Age and all of this, I made a very simple challenge. I made a very simple statement. I said at the time that I challenged anybody, anywhere, to show me a recent clip or a quote from a Republican in 2012 who came out in favor of legislation that would ban birth control. And at this point, I have not had any takers on that. The reason I have not had any takers is because no such quote or no such clip exists. It did not happen. The only thing we cared about in that whole debate was allowing employers to exercise their moral choice. If an employer wanted to cover that stuff, go ahead, we don't care. You want to buy it on your own? Have at it. Who cares? Sandra Fluke can buy all the birth control she wants. Granted, with her looks, I'm not sure how much of it she needs, but whatever. All I'm saying is her employer, if they have a moral objection with it, shouldn't be forced to pay for it. That was all. That's a little bit less draconian than you might have been told, huh? Okay, let's go on to... Oh, oh one more thing. I was going to go on another issue, but I, I want to mention one more thing that kind of puts us over the top. You remember Rick Santorum? You know, the, the former presidential candidate, the, the guy that... If anybody on our side would have been in favor of, of legislation outlawing birth control, you'd have thought it would have been him. Well, even he at the time came out and said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but even Santorum said, hey, I've got personal issues against birth control, but it's not the job of the government to legislate it out of existence. That was, weren't his exact words, but that was paraphrasing. Even Santorum said he didn't want legislation to do that. So, geez, if Santorum is saying that, then it tells you the hype from the left on that was way overblown. Okay, let's go on to another issue. Uh, the issue of gay marriage and gay rights and, and gay whatever. A lot of times you'll hear people make the case that Republicans and conservatives want to just outlaw being gay. and We want to we, we prevent that from ever happening. Here, Again, here's a couple of actual headlines and missives that you might have seen out there in the media. Things that were actually printed. Texas Republicans want to criminalize being gay. GOP aims to criminalize homosexuality. Now, come on. That, that's over the top in saying the least. The opposition to gay marriage on our side, first of all, is not universal. There are people on the right who do not oppose gay marriage. There are people who do oppose it. There are people that are somewhere in the middle. There's a lot of people who don't really give much of a damn either way, believe it or not. We well, haven't been told that, have you? Nevertheless, a significant number of those who do oppose gay marriage, including me, I oppose it, I will admit it. A significant number of us do oppose the idea. However, for many of us, the opposition to gay marriage is specifically related to the word marriage. That's it. Many of us do not feel that a concept that has been defined and shaped by various cultural and religious traditions over the centuries and over the years should be redefined by government. We do not believe that's government's role. We don't believe it's government's role to change culture. Instead, we believe it's the culture's role to change government if and when necessary. But all of that being said, we're getting kind of into the minutia of all of this. We're making it sound like it's a bigger deal to us on the right than it really is. All of that being said, you do not see anybody in the modern conservative movement, in the Tea Parties, anything like that. You don't see any of us trying to outlaw gay behavior. Likewise, many of us who oppose gay marriage, including myself, still believe that gays, or anybody else for that matter, should have the same property rights as everybody else, should have the same rights in terms of medical or end-of-life decisions, not because they're gay, not because they're married, not because of whatever, just because it's your property rights. You've got to be able to do what you want. Our only issue is with the word marriage being used. Our only issue is with the government attempting to take a position that forces the culture to accept something they are not ready to accept on their own. We don't believe that's government's job. Now, i got to tell you something. And this is going to surprise a lot of you out there, a lot of you younger folks who have preconceived notions about conservatives and Tea Partiers and the like. And I swear to you, I'm telling this exactly as I, as I remember it, as I've seen it, as I've experienced it. In all of the Tea Party rallies I've been to, all of the speeches I've been to, all of the gatherings I've attended, so forth, the issue of gay marriage simply has not come up, believe it or not. When I go to a Tea Party rally, I, I could not honestly tell you the opinion on gay marriage of the person standing to the left of me or to the right of me. I don't know. It's never come up. It's never come up because, frankly, it's an issue that's not that high of a priority issue to us. 
it's not that big of a deal when compared to issues like our spending, issues like terrorism, issues like immigration. There's a lot bigger fish to fry out there, in other words. If I were to, if I were to list for you on a piece of paper my top 20 issues facing America today, gay marriage would not even be in that top 20. It might not even be in the top 50. These days, a lot of us on the right, particularly those of us who are younger, look at this kind of stuff as, I couldn't care less what goes on in your bedroom, but just let's not bring our private lives in the public square, shall we? It's really not the big of a deal that the left would tell you it is. Now, I'm against gay marriage, and if it comes up on a ballot, I'll vote against it, as I have in the past. But I'm not, I'm not out there participating in marches against it. I'm not out there making it a top priority issue. And to be frank and honest with you, at this point in history, I would question the priorities of anybody on the left or the right who would tell you that gay marriage is an incredibly important issue. If, if you gave me a leftist who said that, that America needs to accept gay marriage and that's one of their top three political issues, I would question their priorities. By the same token, if you had a conservative or, or someone on the right who said that banning gay marriage is one of the three most important issues facing America, I would question their priorities too. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, finally, the most egregious of these accusations on social issues that conservatives have had to uh, endure as of late. And it's the one that you would think is the most far out there, but it actually got some legs. It actually got some traction. The accusation that conservatives are somehow in favor of rape. Yeah, that was out there. Believe it or not, during the whole Todd Aiken candidacy and the, the Murdoch guy out of Indiana, again, some headlines you might have seen. October surprise, learning what Republicans really think about rape. Pro-life or pro-rape, scrutiny is increasing of Aiken, Romney, and Ryan's recent comments. Now, if it weren't so tragic, it would be laughable that you could get away with even making that kind of accusation, but it had some traction. And we've all heard by now Todd Aiken's comments on so-called legitimate rape and what happens in the female body in terms of pregnancy and rape, and those statements were medically inaccurate. I, I've said that all along. Most people have said that all along. But those statements did not at any point cross the line of being a pro-rape standpoint. Todd Aiken never at any point made any statement that would have been construed as him being in favor of rape. That never happened. But yet, we were castigated during that campaign as being the pro-rape party when none of that was even true. Now, let's get to the specifics here. While there are some conservatives who believe abortion should be illegal in the cases of rape, and again, I'm one of those people, I do believe that. While there are some conservatives out there, such as I, there is not universal acceptance of that point within the conservative movement, and more to the point, the percentage of abortions that are performed because of rape is such a small proportion of the overall number of abortions that even those of us who have that view, even those of us who believe that way, do not think it's worthwhile to really spend a lot of time focusing on that one aspect. According to the Alan Guttmacher Institute, uh, numbers that were uh, reprinted in the New York Times, according to them, only 1% of all abortions are because of rape. Well, heck, even those of us who believe that abortion should be illegal in cases of rape would still concede that that's such a small number of the overall cases that it's really not even worth discussing at length in a general sense. If we're going to talk about abortion at all, then why not talk about the 99% that are done in terms of convenience? But the media would rather not talk about those. They would rather talk about that small percentage at 1% of abortions in cases of rape. And I believe that's because the media know and the left know that it's really a wedge issue. It's really the only one of a very few ways they've got left to get mainstream America on their side or to even consider their side of the abortion argument. Todd Aiken was not pro-rape. Todd Aiken never said anything positive about rape. All he did was make some, albeit medically inaccurate statements about what happens in the female body in cases of rape. That's all, that's it a very minor issue. And what about Todd Aiken on the important issues? Well, remember that fiscal cliff compromise we had about a week ago? That really wasn't a compromise at all. It basically was just giving Obama what he's wanted all along in a silver platter. Well, Todd Aiken voted against it. 
So you have a guy who showed consistency on the important issues, such as our spending, right up until the end. But he made the mistake of making a medically inaccurate statement on what is a horrendously minor issue in the grand scheme of things. Shame on Missouri voters for allowing themselves to be taken in by the media on this fringe issue and losing sight of the important topics facing us, such as our spending. When you step back and look at the forest instead of the trees, Claire McCaskill's views on spending and her views on the role of, of government and the size of government will do far more long-term damage to America than Aiken's comical misunderstanding of the female body ever could. What I'm getting at is this, folks. I'm not saying that conservatives don't have opinions when it comes to social issues. But instead, what I'm telling you is that those issues for this newest generation of conservatives do not have the importance and emphasis for us that they did for previous generations of conservatives. And yes, I grew up around that previous generation, my parents' generation, grandparents' generation of conservatives that were the stereotypical single-issue voters where it was all abortion and nothing else. I get it. But this generation, we're looking at some other issues. We have higher priorities. Our spending, our safety at home, the Second Amendment, immigration. Those are what we consider big issues. All of this other social stuff, sure we got opinions on it, but we're not out there leading the charge on it anymore. And the opinions we do have are not as draconian and universal as you might have been left to believe. Certainly not as draconian as the left and the media would tell you that they are. Here's the appeal I would make to you. If you are in your 20s, 30s, 40s, if you feel like you don't have a political home, if you don't like what Obama's doing, but you just can't find it yourself to come with us, I would tell you this. If you believe in reining in our spending, if you believe in getting government out of our daily lives, if you believe in allowing citizens, including yourself, to keep the fruits of your labor instead of being forced to part with it for some vague notion of societal good or social justice, whatever that means. If you believe in those things, then you have a home in the conservative movement. Regardless of what your views on any of those social issues I just mentioned are. And in fact, you just might find that we on the right have a far bigger tent on those social issues than you might think, particularly those of us who are that younger generation who's taking over the movement right now and who are in the process of taking over the Republican Party. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.